pulling back on the stick to flex horizontal surfaces, exciting the short period oscillation of the X-15. Moving the stick to the side rolls the aircraft, potentially more rapidly than desired. The cockpit pedals deflect the rudder, causing yaw, but also rolling the airframe. These undesirable characteristics can be corrected with a stability augmentation system. Our goals are to explain the stability augmentation system, or SAS, in general. We'll then examine how the aileron, elevator, and rudder act to create roll pitch and yaw, respectively. And from this, we devise basic feedback control laws that augment the stability of the X-15. Throughout, we'll test SAS effectiveness against the uncontrolled X-15 in full SIXDOF simulation. We'll work from our Python-based SIXDOF with a local flat earth approximation where gravity is constant. We use the 1976 atmospheric table. The vehicle is the X-15 with inertial and aerodynamic properties. We'll also have, of course, the stability augmentation system, the focus of this lesson, the six stuff flight dynamics, oiler kinematics, initial conditions, and post-processing. Beyond plots, we'll visualize our simulation in flight gear throughout. A pilot uses the stick or pedals to steer the aircraft, but this also can excite rigid body modes, causing rapid angular rotation or oscillation. Suppose we measure the angular rates how rapidly it's pitching, rolling, yawing, and then feed that into an electromechanical system called the stability augmentation system. The benefits of the SAS are reduced modal oscillation. We can also decouple axes of flight to individual control surface effects. The overall impact of the pilot is improved handling quality. So the pilot can focus on the mission rather than wrestling with the airframe. There are some drawbacks. The SAS is another system that adds complexity, cost, and therefore risk. In general, the stabilizing action from the SAS reduces the potential aircraft performance. Nevertheless, a SAS can enable successful piloting when otherwise not possible. Let's start our SAS development in the pitch axis. Here's an early X-15 with the circular fuselage, active horizontal stabilizers, an active rudder highlighted, viewing the aircraft from the rear. Let's first think about how the deflection of the horizontal stabilizers can produce pitch effects. Let's call the left stabilizer Delta-1. Its sign convention is negative, trailing edge up. Similarly, the right stabilizer, delta-2, is negative, trailing edge up. As the pilot pulls back on the stick, delta-1 and delta-2 deflect in unison and symmetrically. Thus, as a blended elevator effect, del-e, their deflections are summed and divided by 2. The effect on the aircraft is positive pitch up of the fuselage. In summary, if the elevator is negative, pitch angle and pitch rate are positive. We'll refer to this as reverse acting control, and it'll be important to determine the sign of the SAS feedback gain. Pitch stability augmentation opposes pitch through elevator action. Therefore, if an IMU feeds back positive pitch rate, that is the aircraft is pitching up, the elevator must move in the positive direction, that is trailing edge down, to oppose the pitch action. From this idea, we propose a simple proportional feedback law, where pitch rate is the input, KQ, a positive gain for tuning, and del E, the change in elevator angle to oppose pitching. This law is summed with the pilot's elevator input to produce a total elevator effect that goes into the control actuation system and provides steering with stability augmentation. Now comparing pitch SAS on and off.
Roll is produced with differential deflection of the horizontal tail surfaces. Consider the left surface, delta 1, deflected positive trailing edge down, and the right surface, delta 2, deflected negative trailing edge up. Then the effect is clockwise positive roll rotation of the body viewed from the rear. As a blended aileron effect, delta 1 is subtracted from delta 2 so that the aileron is positive when the aircraft rolls right wing down and negative when the aircraft rolls right wing up. This control input action is direct. This means that if del A is positive, then roll angle and roll rate are positive and vice versa as shown. Now suppose we desire to reduce the tendency to roll. Then if roll rate is positive, we must decrease the aileron angle to oppose rolling. Thus, there is negative feedback between the measured roll rate P and an aileron decrement to reduce the total aileron value. This proportional feedback control term is added to the aileron effect from the pilot control aileron to produce a total aileron command to the control actuation system. We observe reduced roll rate due to roll stability augmentation as expected, but also the tendency of the airframe to yaw more now that roll stability augmentation is applied. Now consider the rudder deflecting trailing edge right as viewed from the rear. This causes a positive yaw moment, turning the aircraft right so that yaw angle and yaw rate are positive. Simultaneously, the force on the rudder also causes the fuselage to roll. Therefore, there are two effects of negative rudder displacement, negative roll rate and positive yaw rate. This body roll due to rudder is an undesirable cross-coupling of the rudder into the roll axis. To compensate for yaw roll coupling, we use the so-called yaw interconnect to the aileron. First, note that negative rudder produces both positive yaw and negative roll. If negative rudder produces negative roll, then positive aileron change is needed to oppose the roll coupling. Thus, we propose roll correction through the aileron from positive yaw rate feedback. Now, the total aileron command to the control actuation system has a negative feedback term on roll rate, a positive feedback term on yaw rate, and of course, the aileron command from the stick. We can see yaw control is quite effective in decoupling roll from the yaw command input. As discussed for the yaw channel, negative rudder produces positive yaw, positive yaw rate. This yaw action can excite the Dutch roll mode. But here, yaw rate couples into the pitch and roll axes, so we wish to dampen yaw rate. To augment yaw stability, we note there's a reverse acting relationship between yaw rate and the rudder. So, if the rudder is negative, trailing edge right, then yaw rate is positive. Therefore, we must increase rudder angle to oppose the yaw rate that is, use a positive feedback law. The yaw stability augmentation is then added to the rudder command from the pilot to produce a total rudder command that goes to the control actuation system.
we've devised a SAS for each axis of flight from the open loop step response of the aircraft. There was the pitch SAS with reverse elevator to pitch action. That is, elevator moves in one direction and pitch moves in the opposite. Therefore, the closed loop system required positive gain to dampen pitch rate. There was the roll SAS with direct aileron to roll action. This required negative feedback to dampen roll rate. For yaw, yaw rate induced opposite roll rate, such that positive feedback on yaw rate decoupled roll. And there was the yaw sass, with reverse rudder to yaw rate action, thus requiring positive feedback to oppose yaw rate. The sass architecture we derived is consistent with the X15 sass. Here, pitch rate sensed from a rate gyro is amplified through a pilot-selected gain, literally a knob in the cockpit, and the amplified signal is commanded as symmetric deflections to the right and left stabilizers. Roll rate sensed from a gyro is amplified through a pilot-selected gain, and then commanded as differential deflections to the right and left stabilizers. To decouple yaw from roll, the yaw roll or yar interconnect commands aileron action to correct roll due to yaw. The yaw rate measurement was also sent through a cockpit gain selector and then fed as deflection commands to the vertical stabilizer servo motor. With the full SAS on, we can observe the clear and significant artificial damping effect in the pitch, roll, and yaw axes. The Stability Augmentation System, or SAS, is a feedback control system that improves handling qualities of an aircraft. This occurs through artificial damping of angular rates, increasing stability. Additionally, directional coupling through a control input can be decoupled with appropriate interconnect channels. On the downside, the SAS adds complexity and reduces turn rate. Nevertheless, the SAS meets a crucial need for the X-15 because as the X-15 operates over a wide range of flight conditions, its modal and therefore handling qualities can change, and sometimes rapidly. The SAS offers improved stability over the less stable and rapidly changing flight conditions for safe piloting and reduced pilot fatigue. Access this lesson and more at learngnc.com and a special thank you to all Patreon subscribers who support the continued development of Learn Guidance and Control content. If you're interested in supporting for the price of a fancy cup of coffee, you can gain access to all the codes used to produce this and all of my other YouTube lessons, plus exclusive video tutorials and more. Check out Learn Guidance and Control.